This is the most efficient way to analyze your game to quickly improve your chess. E45, Knights Out. This is the first of the three games that we will see today. I will give lots of practical tips, but please pay attention to this one. How to make a plan in chess. In most of these games, beginners and intermediate players don't have any idea how to do this. Let's go. White played a3, and this is one of the first cases where you do not trust the engine. Because engine says e3, a3 is excellent, a very strong play, but this is completely a drunk engine. Don't trust engine in openings. For the openings, you want to use this, that is the database of the moves that are most played. And here you see that the most played move is bishop c4. Instead, a3 has been played five times, and black has won more times than white. So don't play this move. Also, always ask yourself, what is the idea of the move a3? And there is no practical idea. You're not developing pieces and you are not blocking, you're not really blocking a piece from getting there because the bishop can easily go here, which is a very good square. So that move is definitely not necessary. So pieces out. Now this move, it's funny because if you go in the review, this says that the, this move is good. Uh, but actually this is a very, uh, well, so this move, the move before was excellent. This is just good, not great. So this move is completely fine because you're attacking this bishop and you're asking your opponent to make a to take a decision. Do you take this knight or do you go back? So that's completely fine. Now takey takey. Now this pawn structure is a little bit weak. Those are double pawns, so let's keep this in mind. Knight out, the knight is just attacking this pawn and now black is protecting. All good. D4, attacking the center. Another good move. Take takes, everything amazing. I don't know why this move is just good, not great, but perfectly fine to take with the knight, don't go out with the queen too early, that's great. Now, bishop here, honestly, this should be a mistake. Because, okay, this is a good move, you're attacking this knight twice, bing boom, and this knight is just protecting one time. But, we are moving a bishop for the second time. Is this really necessary? Well, it's not too bad, tactically it's not a problem because you're attacking a piece, but in general, move every single piece once and then move the other. So in this situation, I would have castle. Very logical move, simple move. Okay, now the knight goes back. This is um, oh, this is considered a mistake. Now you have to ask yourself, why is knight back a mistake? You're simply moving a piece that was under attack. But there is a tactical reason. Black played the move castle, and this is a miss. Usually, when you are a beginner, you should really pay lots of attention at those type of um, sign. The miss and the blunder with two question marks. So those are the signs that you really need to check very well. Because usually it means that you miss something tactically. Now, there are some tactics that are very hard, some tactics that are very easy. You need to be um, upset about the easy ones. This one is a medium tactic because you have to see two moves in a row. So here, instead of castling, black had the opportunity to take here. If the king takes, there is this pawn hanging. If the knight, sorry, if, ooh. If the knight takes, there is this other pawn hanging. So you have to see two moves with two possible variations where black is winning a pawn. So black didn't see, so castle the king. If not, if it wouldn't be for this tactical mistake, castling is a great move. So, okay, before attacking the bishop, and now we have to move the bishop again. And another blunder. Again try to understand the reason why this is a blunder. I suggest you to analyze the games on the review page. Because once you analyze on the review page, you don't have spoilers. So here you take time to shortly stop and think, okay, this is a blunder, why? And once you understand why, you ask yourself, okay, what is the move that I should rather play? So the reason is that here there is the fork. And there are suddenly two pieces under attack, you lose a piece. That's why here the best move would have been to retreat a bishop in a different square. Bishop here, bishop e7, just not here because there is the fork. Now again, another miss. This symbol usually means that there was a tactical opportunity missed. And we know which one it is, the fork. Rook e8 is a great move because you're stopping this idea of the fork, you're also attacking this pawn that is now attacking, attacked by the knight, by the rook, and is protected just by the knight. White played knight g5. I understand this idea, but it's a big mistake because you're protecting this pawn twice, but it's very, there's a very simple move, okay? You can attack the knight with a piece of less value. Every time you attack a pawn, a piece of higher value with a piece of less value, you win a tempo because now this knight has to move back and then you simply win a pawn. Again, another possibility of winning a pawn missed. 
again a miss. This move in general, that's why Black is playing really well, because in general okay, he's missing some tactical opportunities, which are not so easy, especially for a rating of 700, uh, but it's in general playing very logical moves, developing the pieces, castling, all the pieces are nearly well. So I'm happy how Black is playing up to this point. Now, the trade, bang, now I'm not happy anymore. Because, why do you have to take with a pawn? Usually the pawns are stronger when they are together. Instead, by taking back with a pawn, you create an isolated pawn. This is a very good idea. Every time there is a mistake, a blunder, if you cannot explain it in a logical way, ignore it. In this case, we can explain this blunder in a very logical way. First of all, you're created an isolated pawn. Second of all, the rook would like to be on open or semi-open file. So taking with the rook is perfect because then there is a semi-open file. Like this, you're blocking your own rook. That's why this move is bad. G4, honestly, I don't understand. There is one symbol on chess.com, inaccuracy, that is always wrong. There is never an inaccuracy. Either it's okay to play for your level this move or is a mistake. Inaccuracy, just GMs can talk about inaccuracy. This move is bad. You are pushing a pawn with not, not a real sense because even if you go forward, you're attacking the knight, the knight can simply move to another square. Two, you are making your kingside castle very weak, so potentially you shouldn't castle now long, short on the short side, but you should try to castle long, where also the king there would be weak. So this is terrible. And also, no purpose, it's not good. Bishop e5, I like this move attacking a knight that is going to be protected. And now queen e7, also another logical move. You're connecting the rooks and the rook is ready to join the party. F3, I don't really like this move. Now the black square are like Swiss cheese, the Emmental that has lots of holes uh, in between. You can use these squares to maybe give a check so that the king can no longer um, castle. I don't like this move, it not, was not necessary, so why? And the rook here, now again... This is the symbol that you don't have to trust, inaccuracy. Who cares about it? The best move according to the engine is a5. Okay, you can maybe explain this move that you're attacking this pawn, but the pawn could actually take here. And then how do you explain? The best move is queen c5. This seems already way too deep, also for my level, honestly, because you're sacrificing a pawn to activate a queen, then you will take back this pawn. This pawn will be potentially weak. And now the queen is sneaking here towards this check and this check. It's too deep. It's a deep, so ignore it. And we can assume that this move is actually good, not an inaccuracy, not at all. Attacking a queen, bringing the rook to the open file. Now the queen is moved, and here we are in a critical moment. Here, black has developed all the pieces, brought the rook to the attack, to the game, to the open files, uh, castle the king, so it's time to make a plan. And this year that black got completely lost. And here's a mistake that beginners are doing in chess. You think a move at a time, but you should pause in some moments and think about the entire picture, how to make a plan. So the move that Black played here is b5. And you might say, okay, what's the idea? There could be an idea, but Black had no idea. So a general advice that you can use in every single position, write it down. Every time you don't know exactly what to do in a position, activate, improve, your worst piece. What is the worst piece in this position for black? It's this knight. This bishop is so strong. This knight instead cannot go anywhere. Cannot go here, cannot go here, cannot go there, cannot go there. Can just go backwards. So you want to find a different square. For example, a knight there would be whoo, amazing, right? Now the problem is that to get there is nearly... We don't really have a puff. Well, we would have a puff. It would be like knight here, knight there, c5 knight there and knight here. So if you would have five moves, those are the five moves that you have to play. Uh, well, if you have five moves, actually you play this, that, and you win much quicker. But okay, this is not something that you have in chess. So one, improve your pieces. Two, attack your opponent king. That's why here in this position, the first move that I would consider is bishop check because the king loses the possibility to castle. But then after calculating that the king goes in the only square here, I see that the king at the next move will go on g2, pushing my bishop back, and then the rooks will join the open file, and honestly, this doesn't seem, doesn't seem too bad for white. So I wouldn't play this move. Second move I would try to see is bishop here, because the rook is stopping now the long, the long side castle, and so bishop here could stop the short uh, castle. But here I see that then the bishop is stopping my rook, so anymore, so the long castle can be played. That's why I don't like also this move, and then I would think, okay, let's go back to the first... Uh, oh, there is another plan that you have to consider. Weaknesses. 
either you can provoke weaknesses in your opponent field or you can remove your own weaknesses. In this position, black has two types of weaknesses, the isolated pawn and the double pawns. That's why c5 is considered the best move. It's not the only reason, but one of them is you're just removing the double pawn, you're trading the double pawn for a, for a normal pawn. Plus, this pawn is now hanging. And what to do? If the pawn is taking, you take back with the queen and now there are lots of threats. This bishop, uh, sorry, this bishop is, uh, no, sorry, this knight. <laughs> this knight is hanging, attacking, attacked by the bishop and the queen. Also, where is this queen going? How, who is going to protect this knight? Well, I, I guess nobody. And there is bishop here that is a threat. So many, I mean, apparently the best move is this. Then there is a check here and your black is just losing a piece. C5 would have been the best move, but I also like the move B5 with the idea of improving, let's go back to the first suggestion, improve the worst piece, the knight. Because now the knight has an amazing path, knight e7, knight b6, and knight c4. Okay, knight c4. The knight there is really strong attacking this bishop, looking at all the dark squares around the king. I really like this idea. The problem is that after rook here bringing the rook to an open file, this is again not an inaccuracy but a good move, uh, black started to trade pieces. This is a bad mistake. Every time you do a trade, you have to have an idea in mind. Beginners tend to do all the trade in the world, but not all the trades are good. In general, write this rule down. Trade just if you get an advantage out of it. In this position, black is trading a bishop that is attacking the knight, pinning this knight, because if this knight moves, this bishop behind is hanging. So he's trading a very powerful bishop that is also possibly, it can possibly jump in all this weak square of whites, trading this for a knight that is not going anywhere, is even pinned. So that's a terrible, terrible trade. And also, then black is also trading a rook. I mean, I can tell you, the point here is that black had no idea how to go on. And that's why you have to make a plan. Bringing this knight here would have been such an amazing idea. Okay, the trades are happening and we get to this endgame. Rook d8 is a good move attacking the queen. And now c5. Finally we have a nice idea, no? Trading the double pawns. Bishop takes is again a mistake because now it's this knight that has no potential, no way to go. This knight has to move so many times to get to a nice square. So trading the bishop is not good. Another mistake is incoming, which is this move. Now, ooh, attention. Again, I told you. Guys, inaccuracy is never real. It's either a good move or it's a bad move. And in this case, it's a bad move. Because first of all, you're not improving your pawn structure. Because, yes, now those pawns are connected, but there is another isolated pawn. So it's not really... Um, I mean, the pawn structure is, to be precise, a little bit improving. Because you're capturing towards the center. So now you're controlling more central squares. But... You could have had a much better move that wins, I, I guess, at least a pawn. So queen takes. This move is not so easy, so you shouldn't blame yourself too much for not seeing this move. Because after pawn takes, you're not losing a pawn, but you're winning a rook, right? Because you give this check and you win the rook behind. Of course, white can see this idea of rook check, also there is the check here winning a pawn, and plays the move castle, right? But in this case, you can simply capture, capture, give a check, and win this pawn. So you, uh, you get to, to an endgame with an extra pawn, a pass pawn, very good position for black. Okay, it happens, you took with the pawn, well, black took with the pawn. Now we are in this endgame with equal material, c3, c4, these are all right move. I like the move c4, you know why? We are not trading the um, double pawns, which usually is a good idea, because here also a very good move could be to take there, uh, pawn takes, whatever pawn takes, and then c5, so you try to create a pass pawn, this is a very good plan in the end games. But this c4, I'm not too upset about it, because gives the rook the opportunity to slide on c3. And this is exactly what white, uh, black is playing, now attacking this pawn. This is considered a mistake, but it's a very natural move at this level, you're just protecting the pawn. The best move according to the engine here is the move e5. And now again, guys, trust the engine just if you can understand the moves. Because this move is a grandmaster level move, so it's not really practical, you shouldn't even consider, because you cannot see this move. There are two uh, moments in chess, when you learn and when you actually improve. When you learn is when you learn new patterns, you learn new tactics, and then you actually improve when you can apply them in a chess game. Well, this move, even if you learn it, it will not be possible to apply in the next few games, so just ignore it, okay? 
So rooks here is a very reasonable move, just protecting opponent was under attack. It's true that now the rook is a little bit passive because it's not um is not attacking anything it's just protecting okay black played this move and this is a mistake because this move has no corpus in the end game you might argue that you should bring the king to the action but in this end game where there is still a rook and the queen if you bring the king to the center of the board you're getting checkmated so in end game you should bring the king towards the center you should activate your king when you cannot get checkmated this is not an end game where you have no risk with the king so you should keep your king to safety and as always a good plan in every position is improve all your pieces which one of the black pieces is the least active the queen the queen here is doing nothing so queen d6 is the best move. The queen now can go here, giving a check, attacking this pawn, attacking this other pawn. Also, the queen is supporting the rook that could jump on d2, attacking this queen. The queen could give a check. The queen could support the pawn to be pushed on c5. So many ideas. Instead, king f7 has no, no idea. I mean, supporting those pawns, but doesn't look really good. f4 is, again, is a normal move, honestly. Is an inaccuracy, but it's fine at this level. You just push the pawn, you are trying to open up files, maybe to play the move g5, to slide with the queen on h5. It seems all good. Now, this move is a bad mistake. Honestly, I really, I'm really struggling to understand the purpose of this idea because you're leaving a pawn hanging, right? This pawn is attacked twice and it's protected just once. So, why does just winning a pawn? You're just gifting a pawn. Now, there could be a tactical reason for this idea because. Here, black, here white took with the wrong pawn, the g-pawn. The best move would have been to take uh, with this pawn or to actually push this pawn. But the reason is that after pawn takes, that seems like winning a pawn, there is an insane idea, again, impossible to see at this level. Queen h4. The queen is sliding, attacking this pawn, the rook is joining, and this king is, is, is about to, give, to get checkmated. But here, okay, so black is sacrificing a pawn in order to go to the attack, to see a mate that you don't see immediately because it's not a mate in 1 in 2, it's maybe a mate in 10. Um, not really sensible. So, a 5 is a mistake, now this is another mistake, but of course black just took back, making another mistake, and now we have queen h5. And I like it, that's why a 5 was a mistake, because you just helped white to go for the attack. Uh, the king moved, and now there is a pawn hanging. Now, I like really taking with the queen because the queen is also protecting this pawn, protecting this pawn. Now, guys, I mean, something insane is about to happen. So, queen to the attack. This is a very strong move because now we saw some ideas. Rook check, queen check. Uh, this could be, for example, if white plays any random move, let's say this one. This is mate in six. Queen here, this. Then I don't know what is the mate, though. So, oh, check here, winning the rook. Then the king moves here. Now, rook d2. King gear, check this and mate. Okay, and it's a mate in six. Not so, uh, not so easy to see though. Anyway, White has a chance to trade the queens. The queens can be traded by giving this check or by giving this check. Which one is best? White made the one that is worse because here, after the trade, there is a pawn falling. Instead, if you would have given a check here. After being bong, this pawn is no longer hanging. Plus, you have three strong pawns that are connected, uh, supporting each other, and they will be pushed and will have lots of fun. That's why queen g4 would have been much better. Now, trading the queens, and we get to this end game where the material is completely equal. Each side has five pawns, a rook, and a king. Rook here is a mistake because you're just leaving this pawn hanging, and black is taking. Now, pushing this pawn leaves another pawn hanging. And black is taking. Now this pawn is going to be stopped. This is one of the most common endgames in chess. Rook endgames. And about this you have to know a few things. Three. One. Activate your king. Because the king can go far, capture all the pawns. Imagine the king coming here, there, then going back to take this pawn. Then going here, taking this other pawn. The king can run all the way through the chessboard without any risk. Two. Create pass pawns and push them. A pass pawn can be so dangerous because it can become a queen. And sometimes you might force your opponent to sacrifice the rook for a pawn. Third, your rooks needs to stay active. The best way to stop a pass pawn is behind the pawn. Always behind the pawn. That's why here black, amazing. Behind the pawn, attacking it. Because like this white doesn't have a way to defend it. Well, there would be a way like a rook here, but then this pawn can push without anyone stopping it. That's why... Oh, actually, white played this move? Yeah, white played this move. And now e7 is what is played. Because 
white realizes that needs to go to stop this pawn. Black takes and the rook goes behind the pawn again. So the players are playing decent, you know, at least with the rooks. Now, this move is a mistake. Actually, this move is many things. Let's see a very easy way for black to win this endgame. So in this position, black is having like, how many extra pawns? One, two, three, four, five, three extra pawns. But you don't need all of them. You just need one to promote. Now, this pawn is not so easy to be promoted because you will lose it. You will end up losing it. That's why there is a very nice move that is rook e5. This move, e4. This move has a, has a different purposes. One, you want to bring the rook behind the pawn. Like this, you will really promote it. Two, you're attacking this pawn. And you are creating then other two pass pawns. So it's great. In this position, if... White takes here, you go up with the king attacking this pawn. Let's say white takes also two pawns. Now you just take this one, and then you're going to push those pawns and to probably win your endgame. I mean, there is here rook c6. I got a little bit scared because so black can also take this. But here with two pawns on two sides of the board, you're completely winning. Because this king cannot get close here because you push this pawn. And uh, cannot leave this side, so you will just uh, end up pushing this pawn and bringing maybe the king. And this endgame should be tactically winning. Uh, now, a5 is the move that is played by black. This move is considered by the engine a mistake, but honestly, I think it's a genius move. Because after pawn takes, you're sacrificing a pawn, and then you will have two connected pawns. I think, practically, this is a genius move. There is a bad uh, downside that this pawn can, be, uh, also can, be, can become dangerous. But black played amazingly. The pawn is pushed, which is a mistake. The best move would have been rook f2. But still, this should be completely lost for, for, for black. Actually, let, let me show how bad is the engine. So, king of two, this is completely lost. But the engine says minus one. Now, it's minus two nearly. But if you let the engine think, this will become always better and better. For example, let's, play, let's put the move rook e5, attacking this pawn and attacking this other pawn. Now it becomes 230. Then uh, th this will become always, always worse for, for, for white. So you bring the rook here behind. Oh, maybe not there. Okay, this is still tough, fine, but uh, this endgame is completely, completely winning. King of two was a very good move, but a6 is the most natural at this level. And now I love how black played. Check, the king moves and go behind, behind the pawn to guard it. Uh, the king goes on and now amazing, b3 pushing them. This pawn is sacrificed, but if black takes this pawn is pushed, becomes a queen. So the rook took, st took this pawn with a check, the king moves, and now this pawn is approaching. And now black sacrifices the rook. And after rook takes, there are two pawns that are about to be promoted. Now, if you push this pawn, you're completely winning. Because after this, bing, you promote one of the two pawns and it's GG's. But black played c2. Oh no. And this allows the king to join to enter and to block this pawn. Now, white still gave some checks, which are bad, and, uh, but now I eventually went in with, uh, with the king, and now black is just losing all the pawns. Bam, 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 bam. Now the king is going back, and I think now this pawn is also falling, and black resigned. New game, this will be very short. There is just one thing that I want to show about this game, the opening, and then this mistake. So let's go. We are in the Sicilian, close Sicilian, and F3. Engine says F3 is good, but I don't like this move. Again, in the opening, do not trust the engines, rather use the opening database. And you see that here, F4, G3, Knight G2, but F3 is not really a move. Okay, this is played fine. Bishop here is also a strange move. As you can see, there are already zero games. And so it's quite uh, a good achievement at move 3, I must say that. Uh, the fact is that this development is really strange. The knight cannot go to the most natural square. Uh, now this bishop is also stopping the pawn from being pushed, and so the other bishop cannot move. It's not really amazing, an amazing development. The knight goes out, and now the queen goes out a bit too early. Remember, don't go out with the queen too early. And this will be a problem for black in this game. d4, going for the center, I love it. g6, trying to develop the bishop in Tianchetto, also a good move. And now bishop d2, developing a piece, plus looking at the queen. Now this knight can be moved and give, a, and give a discovery attack. The bishop moves here, trying to trade the bishop. I really like this move because you're trying to exchange a very strong bishop for white. 
F4, another great move. You're trying to stop it by pushing a pawn, interfering with this bishop. Now, queen b4. This move is a mistake. Usually you shouldn't play, uh, you shouldn't move the queen in the opening too much. Especially in this case, you're just going a bit too greedy because you're trying to capture this pawn or this pawn. Actually, there are two pawns under attack, so uh, this is important to be noticed. Uh, but here, white has an amazing tactical resource. That is using the fact that this bishop is uh, looking at the queen. So this knight can be moved here, and fine, white is losing a pawn, but now there is this check, the king moves, and white is winning a rook. Plus this queen is not having a fun time there. The problem here, that after queen b4, white didn't see this idea, and played the move rook b1. So this is the only thing of this game that you have to analyze, the opening plus this mistake. Because after rook b1, uh, you're just protecting a pawn, but you're losing this other one, this other one could be lost, now black didn't even take. This is not so bad, because the queen is still exposed, so white can play now knight here, threatening this fork, attacking the queen. The queen can go just in two squares to protect. This is already an advantage for white, because there is bishop here, the queen goes back and then this pawn is falling. Uh, this move is the one that is fighting more, but still there is b3, this and the position is roughly equal. Anyway, in this position, after rook b1, <laughs> Black played this move that I I don't know I I don't understand the the idea too much. Okay, maybe Black wants to trade really trade his bishop trying, but um, it's not very efficient as a move. And after pawn takes, which is a free pawn, the bishop took and White won a piece. Now once you are with an extra, once you have an extra piece and the graph, let's have a look. We are here. The graph looks like this. You can stop on Alan. You don't have to keep going with the analysis. Because it's just like, okay, you played amazingly, just move on. If there would be some mistakes, still keep going with the analysis. But in this situation, you can stop here. You understand that rook b1 was a mistake. You should have played knight e5, and we move on to the next game. Final game for today, we have Bing Tonka, Tyler 1, a player that has been playing chess since a few months and has already reached the rating of 1500. This is one of his most painful losses, but lots of things to learn from this. So let's start with the opening. So Tyler is unfortunately <laughs> playing the cow opening, which is the opening of Anna Crumbling. I really don't like the cow opening. And the reason is that you get bad position without knowing why. You are not following any opening principle, like put a pawn in the center. Like, don't move the same piece twice. Your black is about to play this move and then this move. Um, I don't like this opening. Anyway, let's see why. Bishop g5. Already, this is a very tough position for black. Because here you would like to move this knight, to bring, bring the bishop here, and to castle. You cannot do this. And so what uh, Tonka, Tyler, played here is a move f6. This is weakening the king on this diagonal, but also this pawn that is now unprotected. The bishop is moved back. This is completely fine as a move. And now knight here attacking the bishop. Okay, I would have preferred, honestly, to go with the bishop here. Because you never want to let your opponent develop with tempo. What is a development with tempo? Once your opponent is improving one piece, attacking one of your pieces, you have to move it one more time. And then they can develop another one. This is not ideal. So Tyler 1 made it with both knights, attacking now this bishop, and again winning another tempo. White could have played better and moved the bishop, for example, here. Or to play the move a4 and maybe a5, blocking the knight from going to that square. Anyway, this is not a big deal, and the, all the pieces are now developed, but white is much better. White is better because it has more, uh, more space in the center, it's attacking the spawn, for black it's not so easy to castle. Uh, white playing castle, playing, plays castle, this is a very good move, don't trust the engine that says is an inaccuracy. C5, I like this idea, it's ambitious. Honestly, black is already in a little bit of trouble, so uh, it's fine to try to go for some attack, I attacking ideas. You want to play the move C4, trapping this bishop, and this is exactly what happens. White is pushing the pawn and then bang, C4. This bishop is trapped. If this bishop goes here, he's hanging, right? There are two pieces that are taking it. So that bishop is lost, but not really. And this is incredible, because that bishop is trapped, but there are tactical resources. And it's due to the weakness of this pawn, because now this pawn is captured, the bishop has to take, and suddenly the bishop can go to this square. Now white didn't see this tactical resource, and so just took back here, losing a piece. Now, I told you in the previous game that once you are a piece up and 
the game analysis showing that you were always on top, you should stop analyzing. But lo let's, lo let's have a look at this graph. It seems like we have to keep going with the analysis. There are lots of things going on, lots of wild things. Okay, so B3 attacking the knight, and the knight goes there. This seems very logical. The knight goes here, and F5. This move is a mistake. Why? Because he's blundering, first of all, a pawn. I understand Tyler probably is a very aggressive player and he wants to do something to attack but the best, the best thing that you can do for this is play a different opening because this opening doesn't allow you to attack without seriously weaken your important pawns or your important squares. Now this pawn could be taken but why it didn't, I mean, why just not taking this pawn? Well there is a move f4 so maybe the best approach Ah, okay. It's not so easy to see what is the best way to play for white. White needs to play this. Now, if the knight goes back here, there is the fork. If the knight goes back here, now you can take, because there is not a four, and after the bishop moves somewhere, you take also this attacking. This is such a terrible position. Oh my god. Because if after this move, the bishop is not forced to be moved because you have a four counterattacking this piece. This is also taken with check, but after queen takes, this piece is trapped again, which is so insane. Anyway, white here took this knight with the bishop, trading without a purpose uh, is not good. <laughs> pawn took back attacking the knight, now the knight might be moved, taking a pawn. Usually, a mistake that you, um, that you do when you are down on material, here white has a piece down, you shouldn't trade pieces and white is just doing this or helping black to do so so this is not good now this should be completely winning for black black should try to uh, take this pawn to castle the king to activate the pieces on this open file and should get a good position this move i really don't like too much because you're not doing um much to what would be the best move i'm curious okay rook c8 i like this rook c8 attacking this knight this knight moves and then you win a pawn this is a move that you can explain, and every time you can explain engine moves, you should try to correct them. Uh, I like this idea a lot, bringing the rook to the open file and probably winning, threatening to win a pawn. Okay, f5 is also an, an, an fine idea. Another move that could have been very simple is to just castle. Because you are not pushing this pawn, but you are protecting with the rook and then this pawn is weak, and black has a very good position. But okay, rook c8 uh, is the best move of the engine. F5 is instead a mistake. Now the rook goes here, I like the white idea to bring the two rooks here. Rook d7 would have been much better. In general, remember that the rook on the seventh or on the second uh, line, if you are black, is very powerful because usually all the pawns are here. So you can be Pac-Man and farm lots of pawns. After rook d2, the knight went here attacking this pawn. I like the idea to take that pawn. The knight goes here threatening the fork, but after this, the knight is also covering the square. So white isn't really in big trouble here. How did Tyler mess up this one? The rook goes there, castle, and now the rook is joining the party, attacking the bishop and the other. I would have probably just trying to trade the rooks here, if it's possible. Or, or king here, rook there, something like this. Or rook here as well, counterattacking the pawn, something like this. Okay, the rook goes there, this is also completely fine. Uh, I'm just talking from just no don't don't do don't ha get to any risk don't risk but this is also fine king of seven now this is starting to be shady because the knight can give a check here why is this not winning because after this there is king there it is still protecting this bishop but I mean after this I don't like this but it seems like the bishop can simply go there and there should be nothing okay fine what did white play white just took a pawn I like it Ooh, I should you should just go with the other rook attacking this bishop and then you have this check. This shows that when you have a, when you have an extra piece but your pieces are not active, it's like if you don't have an extra piece. That's why when you're down on material, try to activate all your pieces. And when you're up on material, still make sure either to trade pieces so the position is simpler or to bring all your pieces active. Okay, the pawn has been captured, but now there are some pawns as a compensation. This pawn, this other pawn is captured, and the rook is attacking this bishop. There is just one way to protect, and is bringing a rook to protection. H3. Okay, this move is considered a miss. Now, can we understand the reason? So why does knight here, which is basically winning back a, back a piece? But probably what white didn't like is that after a rook here, there is a checkmate threat. But here you can simply take with check. Take back with check, the king moves, and then you save 
uh, you say with G3, H3, whatever. I like more G3 rather than uh, H3 because after H3, there is still a check and this pawn is falling. Anyway, let's go back to this position. H3 has been played. I understand the idea. Now, this is another mistake because you could have maybe moved the king away. Yeah, king of six seems like uh, a good move. But there are also other moves like, oh, yeah, there is a four. Come on. We, we can see this. We can see this. Okay. Uh, rook here trading the rooks. This is interesting, but not the most precise. Now, knight c6 is just attacking back, giving a check, taking this pawn. But now this bishop is lost. The rook is taking. And now we have an equal mat here, an equal position where white is actually having an extra pawn. But with this position here of the king, this could be made in the next move. If it's fear, here, white is taking with check, so the king has to move, but this could be checkmate. So white has just a few moves to save this, and it's g3 or g4. I don't like the move g3 because here white has the move, oh, and, and Tyler plays f3. This is nearly a checkmate net, so white has to play the move g4 to give a square to the king to run away. Now in this position there is an amazing move, but it's tough to see. It is knight here, just wanting to promote this pawn. Blocking the squares for the king, the king cannot get closer to the pawn. And there is a red carpet in front of this pawn that is going to promote. There is no way to stop it. Here, the best engine move is rook f7. Sacrificing a rook to go take this pawn. And here you understand that why it is in big trouble. That's why g5 is a big mistake. Here black lost the winning move. Not so easy though. King here attacking the knight and the uh, pawn. This is a miss just because there is another tactical idea, which is knight take h3. Because after king takes, this pawn is again promoting. Uh, but after this, the king could take this pawn and this should be roughly equal. Anyway, Tyler played the move knight here, but now he's losing a pawn. The king is getting activated. You have few check and this is a bad, bad, bad move because after king here, there is a rook and the knight under attack, so tactically this loses the game. The rook goes away, the king is captured, the pawn is captured, but now look at those pawns, they can just roll. And I think, yeah, I think now that pawn is going to promote, there is no way to stop it, and Tyler resigned. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe, and attention! As soon as my channel will hit 100,000 subscribers, I will go play an OTP tournament after so long times. Check out this video, and see you guys next time! Bye.